Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, I'm now going to be answering question number six from the October 2020 S1 International A Level at Excel paper. Question number six here is about um, discrete random variables. There's a random variable A represents a score when a spinner is spun. Okay, the probability distribution for A is given in the following table. So this spinner has the numbers 1, 4, 5, and 7 on it. And when you spin it, the probability of landing on a 1 is 0 0.4. The probability of landing on a 4 is 0 0.2, and so on. It says, show that the EA is equal to 3.5, the expected value of A, which is also known as the mean of A, is 3.5. So the expected value is basically very simple. This is the expected value of A is basically where you multiply each of the outcomes by its probability. So you have 1 times 0 0.4 and then you add each of those together. So 4 times 0 0.2 plus 5 times 0 0.25 plus 7 times 0 0.15 and that should give us our answer. So we have 0 0.4 plus um, 0 0.8 plus 5 times 0 0.25 plus 7 times 0 0.15 okay that gives us 7 over 2 which is 3.5 that's equal to 7 over 2 which is 3.5 as required and there we have the answer for part A and then part B says find the variance of A. Okay, the variance of A is equal to the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. The mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So what we need to find is, we need to find what the mean of the squares are. The mean of the squares is where you take each of these numbers, these uh, outcomes, and you square them. So 1, 16 and 25 and 49 and you multiply these by their probability distribution so you have 1 times 0 0.4 plus you're going to have instead of 4 you're going to have 16 times 0 0.2 plus and you're going to have 25 times 0 0.25 plus 49 times 0 0.15 and that will give you ex squared and then we can go on to find the um Variance. So let's find what that is. Do I still have these values in here? Yes. So these will be almost the same. Let me just. The first will be 0 0.4. Then you'll have 16 times 0 0.2. Just write that here. 16 times 0 0.2. Okay. Then you have 25 times 0 0.25. And then you have 49 times 0 0.15. 49 times 0.15. So that gives you 86 over 5, which is 17.2. Okay, so therefore our variance, we can say the variance of A is going to be 17.2 minus 3.5 squared. The square of the mean minus the, the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So you have this value minus 3.5 squared, and that gives you 99 over 2, which is 4.95. 4.95. That's the answer to part B. Okay, that's the variance. Okay, so that's A and B done. Okay, now for part C. It says a random variable B represents the score on a four-sided die. So this is something different. This is a dice, which is four-sided. The probability distribution for B is given in the following table, where K is a positive integer. Okay, we can see that all the probabilities are the same for each. So this is like an unbiased die, you could say. F write down the name of the probability distribution of B. Well, this is called a uniform distribution. It's called a discrete, you can say discrete, uniform distribution. I think the word that they're looking for here is uniform, meaning they're all the same probability. So a discrete uniform distribution is the answer for that, just one mark. This is the key word, I guess, uniform, the fact they're all the same. Okay, so that's part C, pretty simple. And now for part D, it says, given that the expected value of B is equal to the expected value of A. So the expected value of B is going to be also equal to 3.5. Now, when you have a uniform distribution, then um, the probability will be right in the middle if these are like symmetrical. 
if these values are symmetrical, then the probability distribution will be right halfway between these values. So 3.5 is halfway between 3 and 4. So between 3 and 1 is 2 units. So between 4 and k must be 6 units. So that must be a 6. Okay. We could also think of it as we know that if it's um, if if it's um, if the expected value of b is exactly halfway between in, in the middle of all of these, then you could say that 1 plus k over 2 is going to give you 3.5. So you have 1 plus k equals 7. So k is equal to 6. That's another way you could explain it. So we, what we can say here is k must be equal to 6. And you can just mention by symmetry. It's just one mark they're looking for. So it's not really any working symmetry by symmetry. Have I spelled symmetry right? Symmetry. Symmetry. I can't remember how to spell it. I think this, this looks correct to me. Okay, symmetry, symmet symmetry. Anyway. Yeah. Doesn't matter, however it is. Okay, symmetry. Or you could mention, as I said, you could say that 1 plus k over 2 has to be 3.5. The first plus the last divided by 2 will give us that, um, you know, expected value. And that will tell you what 1 plus k equals 7, so k equals 6. There's two ways of explaining it. That's part D done. Okay, now for part E, question number 6, part E. The random variable x is such that it is normally distributed with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. Okay, now in this question it says Sam and Tim are playing a game with a spinner and the die. The spinner and the die. Okay, the spinner is what we got with the table for A. This was for spinner and the die. So they're using a spinner and the die in this game. All right. They each spin the spinner once to obtain their value of A, and each roll the dice once to obtain the value of B. Okay. Their value of A is taken as their value of mu, okay, in the random variable, and the value of B is taken as, as their value of sigma, as their standard deviation. That's the mean and that's the standard deviation. The person with the larger value of the probability that x is greater than 3.5 is the winner. So given that Sam obtains values of a equals 5 and b equals 3, and Tim obtained b equals 4, find giving a reason the probability that Tim wins. Okay, so now, for Sam, his value of a is his mean, and his value of b is his standard deviation. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We have x is such that it's normally distributed with a mean of a and a standard deviation of b. So that's going to be a, b squared there. And for Sam, let's have a look for Sam. All right, it tells us his a is equal to 4 and his b is equal to 3. And you want to get the one who has the highest value of p is greater than 3.5. Okay, so x is greater than 3.5. The one who gets the, the, the value of x as greater than 3.5 is the winner. And x is such that it's normally distributed with 4 as its uh, mean and 3 as its standard deviation for, for this Sam guy. All right, so now, um, so this is what, what's going to represent our z value here. x is greater than 3.5. Okay, so we can say that the z is going to be 3.5 minus 4 over 3. Okay, because we know that z is equal to x minus mu over the standard deviation. That's the standardized score. So the standardized score for getting 3.5. The standardized score of 3.5. So we want to find the probability that you get more than 3.5. Okay, now his mean is 4, so 3.5 is going to be over here. And you want to find, you know, basically this probability here. We want to find what value of z is for this probability here. So we want to find the probability that z is greater than this value here. And this value here is going to be minus 0.5 over 3, which is minus 1 sixth. Okay, so this is minus 1 sixth as a z value so the z value the standardized value for this guy sam is minus one six for him to get his probability to be more than 3.5 okay now 
for the other guy, Tim, he'd, if, he, if he's going to win, it says, uh, find the probability that Tim wins. So for Tim to win, he has to get a score which is uh, such that his Z value is less than minus 1, point, one, one over 6. One over six. His Z value has to be somewhere less than one point minus one minus one six sorry okay because then the the probability of getting more than that would be bigger than um you know getting this. so his his um 3.5 has to be such that the z value is less than minus 1.6 then that means the area here would be bigger okay because then the area to the left of this to the right of this story would be bigger so his 3.5 has to correspond to a z value which is less than minus one point minus one sixth okay so for tim we know for him that a and b well we're only told his b value okay so we have his b value is four his a value we don't know so if we can find his a value uh we, this is okay his a value so we have a minus well no we have 3.5 minus a over 4 and that has to be less than minus 1.6 we want his z value to be less than minus 1.6 then there will be a bigger area which is greater than that so if you if you work this out you have 3.5 minus a is less than minus 2 thirds so we can say that 3.5 plus 2 thirds is less than a so a must be greater than 3.5 plus 2 thirds you have 3.5 plus 2 over 3, which gives you 4.166, 4.166. So his A value has to be greater than 4.166. Okay, so um, given that A equals 4 and Tim obtains B equals 4, give a reason, find giving a reason the probability that Tim wins. Okay, so the probability that Tim wins, okay, the probability that Tim wins is going to be uh, the probability that A is greater than 4.166. Okay, so for, for his A value to be greater than 4.166, A has to be greater than 4.166. We have to go back, 167 we can say rounding it, we have to go back to the tables. So A has to be greater than 4.166. So that means basically, because these are discrete uh, variables, discrete random variables, greater than 4.166 means the probability of 5 and the probability of 7. So this is equal to, so he has to get the probability of 5, probability that A equals 5, and the probability that A equals 7, which are probabilities one point. 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15, which gives you 0 0.35, yeah, 0 0.4. So that's the probability that Tim wins. Okay, so this is the probability that Tim wins. Okay, because his mean has to be greater than 4.167. Okay, so there's the answer for that question okay now for part f it says find the largest value of p is great uh, the, the the probability that x is greater than 3.5 achievable achievable in this game so remember x is such that it's normally distributed with a mean of a and a variance of b squared and we know that um, for us to get the largest value of x is greater than 3.5 for that to have the largest the largest, basically that's the largest z value. We know that z is equal to x minus mu over the standard deviation. Okay, in the standard deviation, uh, the mean is given by, this is, this is the mean and this is the standard deviation. So the largest possible value for x minus mu over sigma, or the, uh, the one that will give us the largest area to the, to the left of this. Okay, the largest value for this probability. Okay, so we want 3.5 to have the largest z value. The largest z value for 3.5 being, you know, 
this limit here. Okay, so you have the biggest area to the right of it is going to be when it's as far as away as possible from the mean, when this value is as big as possible. Now, the values of mu can be its magnitude as big as possible. It doesn't mean its value is big as possible. It's magnitude has to be the hard, largest magnitude. So if, if we have 3.5 minus 7, that's going to give us the biggest kind of magnitude of the difference between these two values. Okay, be bigger than 3.5 minus 4, 3.5 minus 4, 5, 3.5 minus 1, 3.5 minus 7 will give us the biggest magnitude of the numerator. And for z to be as big as possible, the denominator has to be as small as possible. It has the smallest magnitude, which is 1. Okay, it's 1. And this is equal to 6, by the way. This is 1. So for z to be the uh, give us the largest possible value, we're going to have x as 3.5 minus 7 over 1. So it's when a equals 7 and b equals 1. So this gives us minus 3.5. Okay, so the largest value of the probability of x is greater than 3.5 is going to be the probability that z is greater than minus 3.5. Now we have to refer to our tables. Um, and I'm just going to get that now. Okay, so here we have the normal distribution function table where we have the z values and we have the probabilities of what's to the right of those z values. That's what we have here. So if we look in this table, we're looking for z equals um, minus 3.5. Well, we don't have minus 3.5, but we have 3.5. And we can use the symmetry. So I'm just going to take this value of 3.5. Okay, and we'll use that value. So take it back here. So that's the value that we have. Just make that smaller. Okay, so this is the value that z is greater than 3.5. Okay, so if we just have a look at that. Okay, so that's the value that the z is, sorry, this is the value that z is less than 3.5. Okay, this is the probability. Let me just draw this a bit more neater than that. Okay, if we have our normal distribution function, Okay, what we've got here is 3.5 and we've got the probability here that z is less than 3.5 so the probability that z is less than minus 3.5 uh, is sorry is greater than minus 3.5 is what we're looking for as we can see this is minus 3.5 here we want to find this probability which is this side it's symmetrical to that it's equal to the probability that z is less than 3.5. And that's what the table tells us. The table tells us the probabilities, that, that this is the probability that z is less than this value here. So we basically, it's going to be that same value, which is 0 0.9998. So we can leave that as an answer. That's fine. Okay, so that's the answer for part F. Find the largest value of the probability that x is greater than 3.5, achievable in this game. And then it says, find the probability of achieving this value. Okay, the probability of achieving this value is when, um, as we said, when the mean is 7 and when the standard deviation is equal to 1. So when A is 7 and when B is equal to 1. So when A is 7, what's the probability of A being 7? Is 1.4. So the probability that A equals um, 7, sorry, it's not 1.4, uh, A equals 7 is 0 0.15. And then after that, you get the probability that B is equal to 1. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, probability A is equal to 7 is 0 0.15. Multiplied by the probability that B is equal to 1, which is 0 0.25. And that gives you 0 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.25, which gives you 3 over 80, which is 0 0.0375. 0 0.0375 and there's your answer the probability of achieving the value this is the value when a7 and b is equal to 1 and that's the end of this question and this paper i hope you understood and um, if you want to see other questions from this paper you can link click on this link that will appear over here if you want to see other questions about this topic you can click on this link over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle and on the top of the page you can find another S1 paper that you might want to watch. Thank you and see you soon.